For this energy forecasting project, we used machine learning and conducted a comparative study between multiple linear regression and an artificial neural network. The machine learning we used was to predict on-campus energy for a major university, and how we did this was developing a multiple linear regression model, and this included both continuous data, which was the outside air temperature, and also binary variables, which were whether or not that hour was on a weekend, whether there was a major campus event going on at that hour, and whether there were cloudy conditions in the sky at the time. To compare these models, we decided to use mean absolute percent error and solve for those, and then we were able to compare which one was better, whether it be the multiple regression model or the artificial neural network. This is the equation we use for our multiple regression model. Y hat represents our predictor. Uh, each of the betas represent different weights that were multiplied by the variables to give different significant levels to each variable. Uh, x, x naught and through x4 represented different variables. We included outside air temperature, campus-wide events, uh, whether or not it was a weekend, and the weather. Now, to compare how our model performed at the end of the study, we used a multiple, or sorry, a mean absolute percent error function. And for this function, we went through for our predicted value and compared that to the historical um, actual. And the difference between this, um, the summation of the differences divided by the number of points predicted was the mean absolute percent error. Um, so this was the function that we used in MATLAB to do that. This is our MATLAB function. This is our MATLAB function. We got this from using a neural network fitting. From neural network fitting we have our input data. This is our electrical inputs. And then we have our targets, which is our output, electrical outputs. Now we go into training these. We use 70% of the data to train the neural network with. And then the data will learn from these samples. And it will use those samples to then do a validation test. So this is the other 15% that we held back. And the last 15% is our testing set. This is what it will eventually test itself with to see if it can predict correctly. And then it has 10 hidden layers. These are layers it goes through before it actually comes to their output. And that would be its answer, the neural network's answer. So we train it. Then we plot the regression. This is how far off the data points are in our test set. Of course, the training set will be pretty close. This is the best fitting line. The validation set, this is what it's first looking at saying, did I have the, was, is my linear line correct or not? And then this is its best prediction from its validation, looking at the testing set. We can see the error of this, which is how far away the, um, the test set was with all the predictions. So you can see that it was pretty close. And we can actually see this from our, this is our multiple regression. It has a mean absolute percent error of 7.02%. It is not robust because it did not use the validation part of the neural network. It just used the training data and tried to have a test set of 30% right after that, which made it overfitted, and, but it did compensate very fast. Our neural network had a training set of 70 and a validation set of 15% so that it can learn from that 15% and then use its 15% test data to see how uh, robust it was and which it was very robust and gave a lower MAP of 4.27%. Um, 
Although the multiple regression is faster, we do not need a speedy result for our neural network. It is better to have the robust model that has a better fit. Um, it has a better fit by 7.2.75% MAPE, mean absolute percent error. So the neural network is the better forecasting tool.